Hello, welcome to this week's episode of Faith and Friends. Jennifer Beck will join us in just a little while, but for now, alongside Annie Lynch, I'm Mark Coons. Happy to spend part of your portion of your day with us here on TV 44. April is here, spring has sprung, it's exciting. You're excited? I like all three seasons, I and mean, there's actually four seasons, <laughs> but I like, like all the maybe. seasons. I like them all for about three months. Okay. They start going into the fourth month, then I'm ready f to start moving on. But, you know, spring is such an important time of the year. And, you know, you've got the renewal. You've got the fact that it's Easter season, a time that we can really celebrate and really get into what Jesus has meant to us. No question. We are excited for April and for spring whenever it does decide to show up. <laughs> Some pretty important topics coming up on today's show. An inspiring near-death experience caused us to examine the topic of fear. Also an update on young life and its impact in this area. Plus it is spring as we've talked about. We're springing to life here at TV 44. You can find out how you can do the same. But first, let's dive into some scripture. Isaiah 40 verses 3 through 5. A voice is calling, clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness. Make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Let every valley be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low and let the rough ground become a plain, and the rugged terrain a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all flesh will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken." Isn't that encouraging for you as we spring to life? The mouth of the Lord, still living, still active, and still has great things for you in your life today. Well, speaking of rough terrain, 4,600 miles on a hike, could feel a bit like being lost in the wilderness at times, and that is exactly what two women, Gail Lowe, also known as Chosen Hiker, and Amy Kwiatkowski are undertaking on their own. They're not doing this together, they're each independently doing this, as each woman is striving to become the first female to hike the entire North Country National Scenic Trail, which spans from North Dakota all the way to New York. The trail actually goes right through this area, and sometime last week, each woman hiked through the area, including Defiance, Cloverdale, Delphus, Spencerville, St. Mary's, and more. It'll be interesting to see if either of these women able to complete her goal of becoming that first female to hike the entire trail. In the Bible, there was a group of people who spent 40 years hiking, in a sense, in the wilderness. Remembering the way God freed the Israelites from Egypt as part of the Seder meal. How much do you know about the Seder meal and how can it be connected to Christ? Well, answers to questions and so much more is coming up this Sunday at Woodlawn Baptist Church in Lima. Jennifer is there with more information. Well, Christians from all over this region have an opportunity that's coming up at the end of this week to learn a little bit more about their Jewish heritage. Pastor Dave Stanford from Woodlawn Baptist Church is here to talk about a special event that's coming up on April 6th, correct? Correct, yes, ma'am. April 6th at 6 o'clock, we will be having a missionary from Jews for Jesus at our church presenting Christ in the Passover. And what he's going to be doing is taking the Passover meal and explaining how Christ fits in to the whole Passover meal and um, and it, we've had this here at our church before a few years ago and it's very interesting and what it does is it it explains to Christians what the Jewish heritage the Jewish church is uh, really about and it connects Christ and and the church and the Jews and the church all together Tell me a little bit about the individual who is coming he actually has or does live in Israel Yes, he is a missionary in Israel right now for uh, Jews for Jesus, and he's coming directly from Israel. And he has uh, told me that he would be happy to answer any questions that people may have that night. There will be a, a time for uh, questions and answers that night. So uh, we're, we're excited about that, too. Tell me a little bit about the actual um, the actual meal that will happen. or the, Are you having an actual Seder? Give me, give me a picture of the... We, we are going to set up a table that's going to have all the pieces of the Seder meal to it, and he's going to go through them one by one, explaining how Christ fits into each piece of the Seder meal. And it's really, really interesting if you've never uh, seen it before. Is this for families, adults, or is it also for children? It's for the whole family, for everybody, for everybody. 
And it looks like, according to your sheet, that there's going to be dessert and fellowship to follow. So in addition to this opportunity uh, to learn some important heritage, this is also just a great fellowship opportunity as well, right? Absolutely, yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm hoping to, to get the whole community together and just enjoy some fellowship with each other and, and just bring the church together uh, at a special event and a special time in, in the church year. All right, Pastor Stanford, thank you very much. That is coming up on the 6th, April 6th, this coming Sunday. That's at 6 o'clock right here at Woodlawn Baptist Church, 836 South Judkins Avenue. Back to you. Thank you, Jennifer. Well, relationship, Jesus Christ, all about relationship, and he desires the same for us today. Relationship with families, relationship with one another. Ohio man Rob Yannick has a new appreciation for relationship these days. Not only his relationship with his earthly family, but also that with his heavenly father. Just the fact that he's alive today here on earth and has been given more time to build relationships with family and friends is a fact that he treasures greatly. John Ondo has this incredible story. Fear. It's an emotion that many men typically never admit to. Like many men, Robert Yannick chose to hide this secret from his family and friends, despite it being something he fought with his whole life. I didn't play football because I was afraid of getting hit. I didn't play baseball because I was afraid of getting hit by the ball. I was afraid my whole life. Even having dedicated his life to Christ many years ago, Robert still feared even sharing his faith with others. I, I don't want to tell people about the Lord because uh, they may ridicule me, they may make fun of me or something like that. Or oh, yeah, Bob, we know that, we know that. Now 68 years old and married to his wife Diane for 45 years, Robert was about to face fear head on. It all began last year as Robert began to have extreme cases of acid reflux. However, his wife was worried that something more critical was going on. The last year he was not his usual energetic self. Uh, periodically I'd ask him if I could make an appointment for a doctor and he would always turn me down. I thought this was old age, this is part of getting old, but I found out differently. On the night of December 5th, he couldn't take the pain in his chest any longer. He woke me up at 2 o'clock in the morning and he says, I think you're going to have to take me to the hospital. I think I'm having a heart attack. First, Robert and Diane traveled to the small hospital near their hometown. Well, I'm watching the heart monitor. And it's sporadic. It's, it's going nuts. And then they come back and says, yes, you had a heart attack. They transferred Robert to a larger hospital in nearby Steubenville, where the doctors had a more detailed reaction to Robert's condition. And the doctor says, threw his hands up, and he says, I don't know how the man's still alive. He says, it's a miracle of God. Those were his words. It's a miracle of God. And he says, and he showed me the all the blockages. I had a hundred percent blockage on one side of my heart and 99 percent blockage on the other. Robert would undergo a five-hour procedure, a quintuple bypass, to repair the damage. However, after the doctors successfully removed the blockages, they were concerned about his heart rhythm. Doctor came in, had the family come in, and he told us there was a problem with the one side of his heart wasn't beating right. So he said, we want to send him to Pittsburgh. For a man who had lived in fear of injury, doctors, and confrontation his whole life, it was on the trip to the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center that Robert says that his fears were taken from him in a dramatic way. I'm going to tell you this. It seemed like the Lord put his hand on me. He gave me peace. I'm sorry. Sorry. He gave me peace. He says, I felt, we're going to take care of this, Bob. We're going to take care of this. We're with you. And I had faith that he was. In Pittsburgh, following more procedures, Robert appeared to be on the road to recovery, alert, and even feeling strong enough to call family members from his hospital bed. And all of a sudden, I noticed the phone drop out of his hands, and he looked like he was trying to get out of the bed. He falls back across the bed, and his eyes was set. His eyes was open, and they were set. Someone came and got me, and I says, is he dead? And during this time, a code blue was issued. Robert's heart had stopped. I called Robbie. I says, uh, Pray your dad's coding. 
Robert would be rushed to emergency surgery. Diane would be left by herself in a waiting room. But I had to surrender him to the Lord and totally trust him. And I just waited. Well, when the doctor came in, he sat down, took my hand, and I thought, he didn't make it. But he did. Robert made a miraculous recovery, and he gives the credit to prayer. If you ever think prayers don't work, you're wrong. Prayers do work. I'm here today because of that, in the grace of God. Because the Lord heard the prayers. I'm here today because of it. Robert now has a strong heart with the help of a pacemaker and a defibrillator. However, the real change in his heart is that he no longer hides in fear after being given a second chance at life. I have told more people about what has happened, what the Lord has done for me, the last six months than I did in 60 years. He is more bold, more bold, more open about talking about the Lord. The Lord, Jesus and I have something in common. He died and rose in three days. I died and arose in 10 minutes, basically. He died for the salvation of mankind. I died to show mankind what God can do because of his grace. And I'll, I'll never forget that, I'll never forget that. Thanks, John. Certainly an incredible story there. Another incredible story is the way Young Life is having such an impact on the Lima community and beyond. National organization has had a local presence for several years, directi directly impacting the lives of young adults in this region with the goal of pointing them to the saving message of Christ. I'm joined now by Area Director Billy Dre and Pastor John Foster to talk a little bit about Young Life. And Billy, Young Life's been in the area about six years now, and we're starting to see some really good growth. Yeah, it's really exciting to see where we've come since 2008. Um, we started with a concentration just on Lima City Schools and Lima Senior High specifically. And over the years, we've grown. Um, we work with teen moms through our Young Lives Ministry. Um, there's a new club that's getting started in Spencer, at Spencerville High School in the last year. And there's also a little bit starting in Shawnee through a church partnership with Shawnee United Methodist. So we're really excited to see the way that the Lord is opening doors. And um, we're just getting a chance to meet kids that are not interested in God and hoping to point them to Christ in a non-threatening way. So, yeah. Pastor Foster, you're at Trinity UMC, a committee member with Young Life. Why is Young Life so important to you? I... Uh have experienced Young Life uh, early on in my uh, career as a junior in high school back in 1958 when I attended a Young Life camp and from that point on it was uh, uh, I just uh, fell in love with it. It's a great uh, way in which the approach of the, uh, the gospel is given to uh, teenagers especially teenagers who are too good to even accept that message. It's, it's just a way in which uh, the, the, the kids are introduced uh, a magnificent way. You know, mm -hmm. Billy, we've got the Young Life Camp that goes on. What are some of the other programs you have in place for to, to help youth of the area come sure. to meet Christ? There's, there's a couple of ways that we work with kids. One that we emphasize to our volunteer leaders is contact work. That's really that mentor style relationship building. That's where those real conversations about life happen. Club is coined our party with a purpose. And so that's that once a week meeting that we have where there's games and there's dinner. And the last 10 or 15 minutes is a message about Jesus that helps these kids understand what he really means in their life. Campaigners is that sit down Bible study, deeper application of the word. And for a lot of our kids that don't even own Bibles, that's that first time that they get to see the living word really come to life for them. And then of course camp is, it is a resort for teens. <laughs> it really is. It's designed to be a place where they can really let their walls down. They can have fun. And it's really cool to see how they get off the bus, you know, with their image and trying to impress the other kids that are there from other areas. And by the end of the week, they have had a transformational experience with Christ. It's just an amazing thing. I also actually accepted Christ at a camp in 1996. I won't tell you how old I was then, <laughs> but it's You're really about four or five, right? Four or five. Yeah. And it's really neat to actually have someone like John on our committee who also had a similar experience however many years before that. So it's really neat to see how the mission of Young Life and the methods of Young Life 
have evolved to meet yeah. the kids where they're at, but at the core, it's that same, uh, that same focus of really helping point them to Christ. And, and like he said, there's a lot of kids that are just too cool for Jesus, just too cool for, you know, talking about those kind of things. And it's really fun to see them really get it and to really accept Christ for themselves and see that life transformation. You can definitely see the spirit moving mm -hmm. and, and how their hearts are warmed, uh, primarily in, in, a, in a way in which they don't even realize it. And it's it just all of a sudden they it's like an, uh, a light bulb, an idea. It just there it is. And uh, they, they receive that message of love and acceptance and forgiveness and mm -hmm. grace and mercy, all that bottled up. And it's a marvelous thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, I, I would think it would be just, like you said, a marvelous thing when you see some kids who probably wouldn't hear the word otherwise except through Young Life. Right. Yeah, and, and again, we hope that we can get these unchurched kids, kids that maybe they've heard about God or Grandma has dragged them to church once or twice, but they're like, yeah, that's not for me. We want them to get to a place where they're like, you know what, I do want to go to church. Will you take me? And we have volunteer leaders that are going to church in the Lima community, even though they go to school outside of the community, so that they can help those kids get there and they can bridge that gap. Um, a lot of our kids are a little intimidated to go to church on their own, and so we want to make sure that that relationship carries all the way from introducing them to Christ to really helping them see how to walk it out for themselves. Another way you guys are reaching out, coming up in May, May 17th, as a matter of fact, uh, a 5K run. That's right. We have uh, our first 5K run. We should include walk <laughs> right. for those who would like to walk with me. They can run with John. Um, it's going to be on Saturday, May 17th at 9 a.m. It will start at the Lima YMCA, and it will go along the river walk throughout the Lima community, a uh, $25 registration fee. And um, there's medals and awards and T-shirts and things like that that everyone will get. So Yeah, it sounds like a fun time. You can register online at AllianceRunning.com, correct? Correct. Or we will have uh, uh, available registration forms also. So um, they are available. We have first, second, and third place for a male, female. And then we have first, second, and third place for all the different age groups that we will have. All right. right. Well, thank you very much, Billy and John. Don't forget, coming up at May 17th, the Young Life 5K Run Walk right at the YMCA in Lima. You made it back from Woodlawn Baptist. I did. That I think, was fast. I think that's going to be a neat event coming up this Sunday. I encourage you to make sure you go to that. Had to get back in time to talk about the Spring to Life campaign because I got a really neat letter from one of our viewers. I want to hear all about it. Well, it says, listen to this, it's from Rockford and it says, Dear TV44, keep up the good work of spreading the gospel as so many are drifting from the Bible. I enjoy the programs of church on Sunday mornings before I go to church. If I am unable to go, I watch 44. I also enjoy the Gaither homecoming programs, plus John Hagee, Charles Stanley, David Jeremiah, and Adrian Rogers. I am thankful for the Christian sports announcers, that would be you. So not just me, we have <laughs> who, lots. Who work with Area Young and announce on 44. It's good to have the sports on to get people to turn it on. We are blessed to have the station keep up the good work. And that is signed by a person in Rockford. Awesome. What a, what a neat, what a neat thing to hear. Yeah, it's neat to hear when people understand what we're doing with sports. And it's not just about the wins and losses, but getting people to see TV 44 and understand that there is something more important than their sports team that maybe is their life at this point. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, all of these things, the Sunday programs, the sports, the music, all of it's designed to spread the message of Jesus Christ in the region. And that's the focus of our Spring to Life campaign. We are springing to life here at TV44. Just get up from your couch and kind of spring off. You know, isn't that fun? Go ahead. We'll give you a minute. Okay. Good springing. At TV44, we invite you to join us in this, our annual spring campaign. Our goal is $50,000 every donation, no matter large or small, used to share the incredible salvation message. Donate securely online at WTLW.com, or you can call in or mail in your donation at 1844 Beatty Road here in Lima, 45807. Our fundraising goal, $50,000. Thank you so much for being a part of the Spring to Life campaign. Now we'll talk about what's coming up on Update with Bill Harris, and here's Zach. Well, thanks, Andy and Jennifer. These days, alone time in general can often seem like a fleeting dream, something many of us desire but never actually achieve. But in our daily walk with God, it is crucial. In his latest teaching, Bill Harris discusses the importance of this alone time with God and how even Jesus relied on it for strength. Bill also discusses the power of rejection and how the fear of it can be a stranglehold on our hearts, preventing us from forming the deep personal relationships that we need. As Christians, we can take heart in knowing that Jesus endured 
and overcame the ultimate rejection and will meet us even in our darkest moments. Bill, I'm going to read something back to you that's directly out of one of the teachings you gave recently. Uh -huh. And I want you just to unpack it a little bit because you say, <laughs> have you ever seen Christians who try to make up for the fact that they don't spend time praying by doing other things for the Lord, such as singing in the choir, serving on the deacon board or trustee board or some other capacity? This yeah. is in relation to your, your teaching on spending alone time with God. Yeah. Are those bad things or are we, are we not supposed no. <laughs> to be spending time on, in the choir or what are you saying? Yeah, I do need to put that in perspective. <laughs> it, it is not a matter of saying when you see somebody doing those things that automatically they're trying to get out of prayer. It's just that sometimes what we do is we seem to have this thing that uh, we build up a deficit for God that we can make up for mm -hmm. by doing other things. And the point I seek to make is when we do those wonderful things, they're, they're, they're good to do, but there is no substitute for prayer. Just isn't. So it, it depends on the heart attitude. Mm. When we're doing those things, because we're called to do those things, they register in heaven that way. Uh, but we still, even when we're doing those things, must spend time alone with God so that we have his direction. Right. And this is a topic we can all relate to. And we've all failed probably yes. at some point or another. Yes. You reference First Chronicles 1611, which says, Seek the Lord in his strength, yearn for and seek his face and to be in his presence continually. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot in that verse a there. A lot. Yearning for and seeking his face. Uh -huh. uh, unpack that a little bit for us. Well, I think first of all, his strength, when it talks about uh, uh, seeking his strength, his strength as opposed to our strength, because mm. we are so prone as human beings to move on our own strength. We concoct the plans that we want to do for God, and then we ask God to come in and bless it. Well, we haven't even gone to him to help, have him help us to formulate the plans. We do it. You know, we're, we're moving on our own strength. Mm. And then secondly, when it talks about yearning for his face, this is a face-to-face -face relationship. Can you imagine, we, we have this kind of relationship where God doesn't want a religion, he wants a relationship. Uh. And so that's what the face-to-face -face is all about. And then the third one, I forgot, is, uh, let me see, it's, the, the it's strength just, and the face. Being his oh, presence, being his presence continually. Continue. Yeah. That's the atmosphere. We have to have a, a daily atmosphere that follows us along, uh, an atmosphere of holiness and righteousness so that we're speaking right to our brothers and sisters. We're treating them right and we're choosing the right words to say and we're not hurting people, yeah. all those kinds of things. Well, you, you also reference in this teaching um, back to Jesus and, and specifically the time that he heard of his cousin's death, John the Baptist. Yeah. And I've heard you say, if Jesus needed his alone time with God, how much more do we <laughs> need it that the, the, yeah. our Savior, the, the Lord and Savior we look up to, he needed that alone time too. Yeah, I, I mentioned several different examples of Jesus getting away from people and going off to pray. One of them being uh, when he learned of the death of mm -hmm. his cousin, John the Baptist. And there are other uh, times. Uh, between healing campaigns is another one I use where he went off and prayed. Um, there are just a number of occasions that we mentioned in the message yeah. where he does that. And what he's doing is he's re-energizing his batteries so that he can go on to the next thing for the Lord. And again, if we don't do that, you know what we're going to be doing? We're going to be moving on our own strength. Right. It takes us right back to our own strength. Right. So we've got to do it. Well, that's a great platform to set up what you speak on next and um, your next teaching, which is something that's very heavy, the idea of rejection. Mm -hmm. and looking at it from the perspective of the rejection Jesus went through before the crucifixion. But really, we spoke a little bit prior, the rejection that maybe we've all experienced at some time, yeah. and, and that's really behind a lot of the bitterness yeah. or just a lot of the, the hurt in a lot of people's lives. Sure. There's even a bullying that's going on. That, yes. that, there's a form of rejection in that. I've done a couple of uh, TV programs for the public TV station in uh, Toledo on that subject alone. Big issue in schools and the like. Christ went through the rejection so that he would know how to relate to us mm. as we go through the rejection. And when you, when you read intricately about that rejection, he came to save the very people who rejected him. That, that's hurtful. Yeah. That's very hurtful. Uh, and we learn early on, don't we, as children about rejection, be mm. rejection because sometimes our little peers will reject right. us for one reason or another. And it is very painful. But when we come to Christ, it doesn't mean that we won't have any more rejection, but we have someone who's gone through it to help us as we go through life. Because as Christians, let's be careful to understand we're going to go through rejection by uh, a sin-cursed world that does not understand right. this lifestyle that we live. Right. You know? 
I want to take us through a little bit the depth of Jesus' rejection because we certainly experience it in our own lives, but you point out a few things in your teaching. You know, the fact that Christ set aside his glory. He's the son yeah. of God. And like you said, to save those who are actually rejecting him. But it's a, it's a very deep rejection. Can you imagine on his human side, when he left all the glory in heaven, came down in bodily form, came down as a human, hmm. and again, uh, we today, as well as those back then, rejecting him, and, rege and he's looking and thinking, I gave up all of this right. to come down here for people who are still rejecting me. But I think one of the most significant rejections, though, uh, Zach, is the rejection of his father. Hmm. Because when he, when he hang, hang there on that cross and said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? God stepped back and actually left Jesus. He abandoned Jesus right. alone because when he looked at Christ, he didn't see the Son of God on that cross. He saw the sins of the alcoholic. The, he saw the sins of the drug addict and the prostitute, the homosexual, the heterosexual. He saw all of that. And when he saw that sin, because God is offended by sin, he rejected him. We want to remind you, if you enjoyed these interviews, you can watch Bill's complete teaching Thursdays at 9 a.m. and Sundays at 1.30 right here on TV44. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Zach. Such great information. Really appreciate Bill Harris and his, his heart for God and how he's willing to share that. Well, we want to tell you about a rare opportunity coming very soon. Ohio is just one of 14 states on the current theatrical tour of C.S. Lewis's The Great Divorce. The stage production is coming to Columbus in just a few weeks. In this acclaimed performance, three actors transform into over a dozen characters to tell the fantastical morality tale about good and evil. Lewis, of course, well known as the author of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, is also the author of many other books, including The Great Divorce. You can see this theatrical production live Friday, April 11th, 8 p.m., or Saturday, April 12th, 4 p.m. or 8 p.m. It's taking place at the Capitol Theater. To purchase tickets or for more information, visit greatdivorceonstage.com. Well, a quick moment now to remind you that you can contact us anytime with your thoughts, ideas, or prayer requests. You can find us on Twitter, at MarkHoons44, at Andy Lynch 44 or at Jen Beck 44 or on Facebook for both Andy and Jennifer. Remember, you can always call or email prayer requests to either 419-339-3000 or prayer at WTLW.com. That's a great insight on our website as well. WTLW.com has High Points of Life and Jennifer's inspiration, one minute of inspiration <laughs> that you can enjoy as well. Well, before we close, we again want to share about our Spring to Life campaign. Together, we can raise $50,000 to continue opportunities to share the life-giving hope of Jesus Christ. That's why we do shows like Faith and Friends. We have fun making food and laughing together, but in the end, it is all about Jesus and his saving grace that he gives to us freely. It's also why we make sure you have access to biblically sound preaching and teaching. And your ongoing support also allows for safe, family-friendly primetime programming, including The Andy Griffith Show. Will you join TV44 as we together raise $50,000 between now and May 11th? Visit WTLW.com or call 419-339-4444. Thank you for being a financial partner with TV44. And now as we close, we leave you with our scripture of the day. It comes from Isaiah 40, 3 through 5. A voice is calling, clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness. Make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Let every valley be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. Let the rough ground became, become a plain and the rugged terrain a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all flesh will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Your walk through Jesus Christ can become a broad valley. He does make those rough terrains smooth. And if you're going through one of those periods of rough terrain, we are here to help. And as we mentioned earlier, you can contact us through the prayer line at 419-339-3000 or prayers at WTLW.com. So glad you've joined us today. Hope that you have a wonderfully blessed week. We pray for the same for you and for you and Thank for you. everyone else. Thanks again for joining us. Have a good week. Join us again next week.